Let's stand for the reading of God's holy word. Jesus reveals God's true intent behind the law. Part 6. The Just Jesus Evangelistic Campaign, Day 238, since January the 20th, 2017. Slash day 605 since January the 1st, 2016. But first, beloved, what is the gospel? What is the gospel? We've heard so much about the gospel. Uh, I fear many people do not know what the gospel is. Uh, the gospel is not gospel singing. It's not a gospel celebration show. It's not an entertainment show. Uh, singing has nothing to do with the gospel. Other than speaking to people's heart before the gospel is presented. I don't know of anybody getting saved from a so-called gospel song. The gospel must be preached and explained. According to 1 Corinthians 15, verses 1 through 4, the gospel is embodied in these words. Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I preached unto you. You see, the gospel must be preached. which also ye have received, and wherein ye stand, by which also ye are saved, if ye keep in memory what I preached unto you, unless ye have believed in vain. For I delivered unto you first of all that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins according to the Scriptures. Jesus Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures and that is the Old Testament scriptures and that he was buried he rose and that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures that is the Old Testament scriptures rooted in biblical fact James Denny said, as there is only one God, so there can be only one gospel. Dr. Warren Worsby said, regarding the gospel, first of all, means of first importance. The gospel is the most important message that the church ever proclaims. While it is good to be involved in social action and the betterment of mankind, there is no reason why these ministries should preempt the gospel. Christ died, he was buried, he rose again, he was seen, are the basic historical facts on which the gospel stands. Christ died for our sins is the theological explanation of the historical facts. Many people were crucified by the Romans, but only one, only one victim, if you will, ever died for the sins of the world. Amen, somebody. End of quote. Please remain standing for the reading of God's holy word for this message. Matthew chapter 5, verses 27 and 28. Ye have heard that it was said by them of old time, Thou shalt not commit adultery. My God, my God, help us. 
But I say unto you that whosoever looketh on a woman to lust after her hath committed adultery with her already in his heart. Let's pray. Holy Father God in heaven, we pray in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and we thank you for your holy word. And we pray that you would have your holy word to convict us, to find a lodging place in our hearts. And Lord, help us uh, to love your holy word, to cherish it, and to obey it, and to be faithful to it, and obedient to it. Help us not to be just hearers of your holy word with a made up mind that we're not going to do it. But to do it from this point forward. Lead us, guide us, and direct us. At the same time, Lord, demonstrate the power of your Holy Spirit and save that soul that is nearest to hell. Re revive and reclaim your Christian people. Rebuke and bind the devil, his demons, and his hosts, Lord, from uh, the rest of this meeting on this Friday. And help all of us to be prayerful, sober-minded, vigilant, and watchful. In Jesus Christ's name we pray, for his sake. Amen. You may be seated. Ladies and gentlemen, Augustine said, Passion is the evil in adultery. If a man has no opportunity of living with another man's wife, but if it is obvious for some reason that he would like to do so and would do so if he could, he is no less guilty than if he was caught in the act. My God, my God. That is so true. As Jesus delves into the true meaning of the law, if you will, or what we could call, uh, and one theologian called, the law behind the law because of our sinful nature no matter how well meaning we are we'll mess up anything and miss the whole point of something dressed up in our black robes and hats on our heads Jesus dealt first with the law against murder and told us that God's true intent is that we not hate another human being to even get to that point speak angrily and in a mean fashion toward another human being or allow a broken relationship with another human being to go on without attempting to reconcile it and I want to show you how evil this sin is and that is there are people who would rather die and go uh, would go to the grave instead of getting right uh, with their son or daughter or with their sister or their brother or with their parents they would rather die a husband and wife they would rather die and go to the grave and go to heaven or hell or wherever they're going and that is sad people when people are so proud and so stubborn and so hateful that they would rather be buried in a cold grave than to get things right. And that's happening all across this country. It's happening around the world. People are dying and family members don't even know. Friends don't even know.
So now Jesus turns his attention to another law that dealt with human actions, the law against adultery, which is running rampant in society today and in the church. While murder is still universally condemned in our culture, of course, adultery is not. In fact, uh, some now believe that sex should not just be reserved for men and women who are married to each other. Tragically. Now we got the abomination of one ugly stinking man laying on top another ugly stinking man which is disgusting in God's sight and disgusting in anybody's sight who is normal. Women with women, men with men and now sanctioned by the government and we wonder why we're catching hell. America's catching hell and and I want to tell you that uh, God has shown great mercy. This is a warning. You still want old, ugly men dressed up in dresses going into little girls' bathrooms? Keep on doing stuff like that. God will wipe out the whole, uh, whole court of this nation, or half of this nation, and it's not going to be long if we don't repent. But don't, don't, don't just be mad at the homosexuals now. Because uh, we brought it on ourselves in the church by letting adultery and fornication go. Pastors and deacons got girlfriends on the side. Have their second wife at the church. First ladies and women in the church, so-called first ladies and women in the church committing adultery with other pastors the church is rife with it and so many in the church can't say anything about homosexuality afraid to say anything because the homosexuals got their number others claim that adultery could enable a married person to remain with a spouse with whom they are having a difficult time or in other words a spouse they can't stand. There's a whole industry out there of uh, people on websites hooking up with uh, somebody they can commit adultery with. They don't want they don't want to break up their marriage and they want so they want somebody else who is married who wants the same thing they don't want to bring up their marriage either but they want to uh, get together to kind of get a break but again Jesus calls us to a deeper interpretation if you will of the law he not only condemns adultery but he condemns the lust behind the adultery when love hath conceived, it bringeth forth sin, and sin, when it is finished, bringeth forth death. Can somebody say amen? Every day, all day. Sin will take you further than you wanted to go, keep you longer than you wanted to stay, and make you pay more than you wanted to pay. So, beloved, I... Uh, want to share with you what Jesus said I say unto you that whosoever looketh on a woman to lust after her hath committed adultery with her already in his heart already in his heart Dr. Warren Worsby writes sexual impurity begins in the desires of the heart Jesus is not saying that lustful desires are identical to lustful deeds and therefore a person 
might just as well go ahead and commit adultery and so many have bought into that lie of Satan. I'm already lusting after her. Uh, she already cut me eye and I cut her eye. I know she's mad and I'm mad too but I'm, I'm going to get that. I'm going to get that. And let me just say something to you women. If you don't want him to come after you, don't cut an eye. Don't give him an eye. Because as soon as you give him that little evil eye, he's going he's coming for you. Married or single. And if he knows what he's doing, he's going to get you. You don't have to bow your head right now. It's not time to pray. Don't bow your head. It's not time to pray. We're going to pray in a few minutes. Stop cutting your eyes at Bo Peep. Because Bo Peep is going to get you. And they're and they watching to see. They're watching to see if you're going to cut that eye over there at them. They're watching to see if you're a virtuous woman. They're watching to see if you're devoted to your God and to your vows. And they'll stand right there and won't say anything to you. And they'll put a bet down with their buddy. Watch you look at me. She, she looks over here at me every day. With those uh, eyes of uh, have sex, sex with me eyes. You got men who lust after women all the time and women who lust after men. And Jesus is concerned about the thought life, the mind life, because that's where it begins. Amen, somebody. That's where it begins. Keep on, keep on, keep on thinking that. You're going, y'all going to end up together. He said, but we go to the same church. That does not matter, obviously. I'm a pastor. That does not matter, obviously. In the finale of uh, Greenleaf, Bishop Greenleaf, last time we saw him, he was stepping off into a hotel room with a fine mama jama. I, I hope that uh, when they come back that, that nothing happened but it happens a whole lot well, I'm the pastor's wife uh, 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 you're lusting too obviously because that's where it begins <clears throat> that's where the adultery begins in the heart <clears throat> you've already imagined it how it's going to be you might have even gone further and talked with the person about it. It's already happening before you even got into the bed. Before you even met at the hotel room. It's already happening. That's why Jesus says when a man or a woman lusts after somebody, they are already committing adultery in their heart. God looks on the heart. Man looks on the outward appearance, but God looks on the heart. Amen, somebody. And those of us who are saved, we know that's true. Because if you're saved, if you're born again and the Holy Spirit is in your life, uh, the, so, something on the inside is going to tell you, don't do that. Don't look at her again. See, that first look, that first glance, that might be innocent. But if you are driving down the road and you're looking at her again, going to her car, uh, and you uh, almost hit an old lady, now, you, now, now you're talking about lust. You're talking about lust now. The desire and the deed are not identical, he continues. But spiritually speaking, they are equivalent. The look that Jesus mentioned was not a casual glance. 
Now this is a look that you might as well just go ahead and get out the car and grab her by the neck and say, Hey, I want you, girl. I want you. I got to have it. But you better not do that. But a constant stare with the purpose of lusting. Trying to stupidly get some satisfaction out of that encounter with your eyes. I'm going to tell you what Pastor Cuthbertson told me. Uh, because my only temptation, as I've said before, is fine women. I have no other temptation. Well, maybe eating too much. Those two temptations all involve the lust of the eyes. But I'm going to tell you what Pastor Cuthbertson told me. Some of you are not going to like it. He said, I, you know how to kill that? I'll tell you how to kill it. When you see that fine woman walking down the street, just imagine her taking a big nasty dump in the toilet. That'll kill it right there. He said, that'll kill it dead. He said, preacher, you should not have. I'm just telling what Pastor Cuthbert told me. I, have not, I take no responsibility for what that man said. He said, just, just, just imagine her taking a dump on the toilet lasting an hour. Stinking up the whole place. That'll kill it. That will kill it dead. Preacher, preacher, you should not have said that. I, I didn't say I didn't say anything. I'm telling you what the man told me. And he said it works for him every time. It is possible, beloved, if you can recover from that. For a man to glance at a beautiful woman. See, this is where I get sick and tired of some some people. Some of these super spiritual people. Uh, when you, 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 you acknowledge that the woman is beautiful. Oh, she's beautiful. And, oh, I don't, I don't see, I don't see people. I, I, I mean, I've had people tell me this. I don't see, I don't see people. I, I, I oh, I didn't notice, I didn't notice she was beautiful. You liar. Just tell the truth and move on. Oh man, she's beautiful. Oh, praise the Lord, she's beautiful, beautiful woman, and and move on. Don't keep looking at her and lusting. Mm -mm -mm -mm. That's how we did when we were lost. Now, now that you're saved, you don't do that. You don't do, mm, mm, mm. Wow, wow. <laughs> Come here, baby. You can't do that. Now you're saved. You can acknowledge that a woman is beautiful. That God has made some beautiful women. Uh, the most beautiful creatures on earth are women. Let me know that they, they could not have come from an ape. That's impossible. The most beautiful creatures on earth are women. And there's nothing more beautiful than a full-grown woman. You can acknowledge that she's beautiful. That's okay. And know that uh, she's beautiful, but not lust after her. The man Jesus described looked at the woman for the purpose of feeding his inner sensual appetites as a substitute for the act which in reality is very stupid, isn't it? See, if you don't overcome so-called addiction to porn, you have never been born again. You have never been saved. I'm not saying you won't be tempted to look at it. Or you need some kind of... Uh, uh, you need to prime the pump to try to get with your uh, old wife or whatever the case might be and you look at a little something here uh, look at a certain show to try to get excited uh, still wrong to do that but uh, if you are saved if you're born again 
if you don't climb out of that porn hole, there's something wrong. You have never been born again. If you're saved, you'll get out of it. Why? Because the Holy Spirit of God will not allow you to stay in that. And number two, the Lord will help you realize how stupid it is to try to get some kind of sexual satisfaction from looking at women that you'll never see or meet. That's just plain stupid. Borderline insanity. It was not accidental, this lust. It was planned, he said. The heart is the fountain of all our desires. If we want to crush sin in our lives, we must crush it first in our hearts. I've shared with people in my family, you know, there's no need to try to itemize the, the, the wrong that you've done. You need to get your heart right with God. I've shared this with others as well. Oh, there come people coming, I'm sorry about this. No, your whole heart is wrong, see. You need to get your heart right with God. And then you'll stop doing this evil or this wrong. Our sinful hearts tell us to look lustfully on another person. And don't lie and say you've never been tempted with that. You know you have. We got women who lie and say they're never tempted with an, an, another man that's not their husband. So that's just a lie to hell. Yes, you are. And it is from such a look that other sinful deeds emerge. Here's a sinful deed. Passing the woman your number. Or passing the man your number. Doing the unholy handshake and rubbing each other's hands together, indicating that you are interested in them. Hugging every time you see, even in the church, hugging too deeply is not a Christian hug. My daughter is uh, representing. A university at one of the largest conferences and every now and then she'll send me a picture uh, and of a uh, uh, older man who's an author or a writer or a preacher giving her a hug it's a Christian hug and I see some space unless they're fat I see some space there in between them is you do this number it's like this and like, you know, no all hugged up together like you married we don't have we don't we don't we don't do that in the church and some people need to stop hugging all together I was uh, at a church one time in Georgia uh, I can't remember whether or not I preach or not I prefer this pastor and um, after church, a young couple came out, and this pastor ran down the couple, didn't pay any attention to the young man at all. He was holding the baby and just grabbed the man's wife and hugged it like it was his wife. He was an older, older guy, probably an old perverted fellow. And I said, wow. I, said, I was going on my uh, on my way to cut to the car, and I said, "Man, that's I don't think that husband's gonna like that." The way he hugged his wife, almost picked her off the ground. I said, "What's? I've never seen that before." So we're not talking about hugging like that. Uh, Got to always be up in the corner by the last window of the church, hugging somebody's wife or somebody's husband, and and and, and smiling and grinning. You haven't smiled and grinned like that all week with your own husband. And with your own wife committing adultery with your eyes lusting after that woman after that man and so while a few in the world see nothing wrong 
with adultery, and not only a few, many. Many still hold to the value of monogamy, monogamy in marriage. But Jesus calls us to an even higher standard. And some of you folks need to get off of Facebook. More adultery has been committed through Facebook with old flames than anything else. And by the way, more folk have been killed too for doing that. He compels us to keep the door to adultery firmly shut by not giving in to lustful thoughts. Uh, watch your heart, for out of it comes the issues of life, the Bible tells us. Let's pray. Holy Father God, we pray in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. We thank you for your holy word. And Lord, uh, people do not like to hear this kind of preaching. But in the words of my dad, Bishop Daniel White Jr., it's tight, but it's right. And we need to hear it. And uh, for we have these problems in the church and in the world. So have mercy and grace upon us and forgive us of our sins where we have lusted. Maybe not have gone all the way, but we have lusted after, after others. And we pray that you'll help us to repent of that and get our hearts right with you and keep them right by your grace and by the power of your Holy Spirit. Please Save that soul that is nearest to hell. Glorify your holy name and lift up your son, Jesus Christ, who died for all of our sins as the Lamb of God who took away the sins of the world. In Jesus Christ's name we pray and for his sake, amen. Now, beloved, if you're with us today and uh, you have never trusted the Lord Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, Allow me to show you how you can place your faith and trust in Him for salvation from the punishment of sin, which is hell. First, accept the fact, dear friend, that you are a sinner and that you have broken God's laws. The Bible says in Romans 3.23, For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. We all have failed God. Second, accept the fact that there is a penalty for sin. The Bible states in Romans 6.23, For the wages of sin is death. Third, accept the fact that you are on the road to hell. Jesus Christ said in Matthew 10.28, And fear not them which kill the body, but are not able to kill the soul, but rather fear him which is able to destroy both soul and body in hell. Also, the Bible says in Revelation 21.8, But the fearful and unbelieving and the abominable and murderers and whoremongers and sorcerers and idolaters and all liars shall have their part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. Hell, the lake of fire, is an awful place. Now that is the bad news, but I have some good news for you. And I've been called by God and ordained by God to give you the good news. Jesus Christ said in John 3.16, here's the good news for you. Over here's the bad news, you're on the road to hell, and if you died right now, you would go to hell. The good news is over here. Jesus Christ said in John 3.16, For God so loved the world, that includes you. Put your name there that he gave his only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, that whosoever put your name there, believeth in him, should not perish. Perish where? In hell. But have everlasting life. Where? In heaven. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou, you, shall be saved. Jesus Christ died for your sins, was buried, and rose from the dead by the power of God for you so that you can live forever with him. Pray and ask him to come into your heart today and to save your soul, and he will. Romans 10, 9 and 13 says that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shalt believe in thine heart 
that God hath raised him from the dead, thou you shalt be saved. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. It is as simple as that. Yes, it is as easy as that. Just believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and you will be saved, the Bible says. Pray and ask him to save your soul and he'll save you. Having faith in Jesus Christ. I'll be glad to lead you in prayer. Phrase by phrase, repeat after me. While you believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, who died for your sins, was buried and rose again. Holy Father God, I acknowledge that I am a sinner and that I have done evil in your sight. I have broken your commandments. I have lied at times. I have stolen things at times. I have lusted after people that uh, I'm not married to. Lord God in heaven, for Jesus Christ's sake, please forgive me of my sins. As I now believe with all of my heart in the Lord Jesus Christ, that he died for me, was buried, and rose again. Lord Jesus, please come into my heart and save my soul and change my life and help me to repent of my sins past and to follow you in the new life by your grace in Jesus Christ's name I pray and for his sake Amen now dear friend of mine if you believed in your heart in the Lord Jesus Christ today that he died on the cross for you was buried and rose again allow me to say to you congratulations on doing the most important thing in life and that is trusting Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior for more information to help you grow in your newfound faith in Christ please go to gospellightsociety.com and read my pamphlet what to do after you enter through the door Jesus Christ said in John 10 9 I am the door by me if any man enter in he shall be saved and shall go in and out and find pasture. Dear friend, if you trusted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior today, please email that to me at dw3 at gospellightsociety.com or one of our other uh, email addresses on our sites and let us know. We have some free material that we want to send you immediately. If you have a prayer request, please email that to us as well, and we will pray for you until you tell us to stop. Until next time, my beloved, God loves you, we love you, and may God bless you real good is my prayer.